Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? Just a little update on my Porsche build. Kind of tinkering around with it. And I was going around, you know, doing some things with it. And I thought, ah, I better turn the camera on and show you guys. I haven't really been able to work on it much lately. So let's take a look at it. really haven't been able to look work on this model as much as I want to since I started my job and just trying to I don't get things kind of going in the right direction uh, but uh, I did the salt technique I've never done it before and uh, Tim Brown or the throttle power he does it really well I'm not doing it so well so I don't think I'm getting the look I want I'm having a hard time getting the salt to come off and some of it is taken taking it right down to the plastic and all the different layers I put in on this thing to give you know different layers of wear on the paint not really doing what I had hoped um, so not I'm not huge on the on the salt thing I think I might be able to make this look pretty cool though but I'm probably doing something wrong I got to go back and watch his video but there's other ways of, of getting your chipping effect and all that and I think I can make this look cool now I'm not for sure I know I did a layer of like red oxide to represent the surface rust then I primed it and then I put a white base coat down and then the red and I'm kind of been sanding with kind of a used thousand grit uh, uh, sanding pad so it doesn't have a lot to it and I'm just kind of I got some water right here and I'm just kind of going and sanding on this and just kind of letting things naturally happen and I think I'm getting through because I think I was thinking that I went to the plastic but that's actually the white um, under layer thing job and then later on I can kind of show you guys if I get to the point <laughs> that uh, I can cover some things up with some chipping effects and different washes and rusts and weathering techniques with the, with the uh, the stuff that I have from like AK and MIG, we got some really good stuff that we're probably going to play with on this on this body. But man, I am coming down to the Y or I kind of actually kind of liking how the top of that fender's looking. It's uh, the where, what the salt did do. It did give this kind of corrosion look, and I'm kind of really wanting to just all the top areas kind of really kill the paint and I didn't want to go through the red that bad but I think we can do some good blending and making this look pretty bad this I really had a lot of salt on this fender not as much on this one so I might leave that alone move over to this but uh, I think we can get a really cool look I want to do some kind of I'm avoiding that decal right there but I want to do some kind of uh, mucking up and making it look like it's been on there for a long time but we'll see we'll get to that but this is what I'm doing with this but man as of right now we're like almost into mid-September not quite but I don't know what it's September 10th right now and this is due on the 30th and we've gotten a couple of days the uh, USAC build to start and I got a uh, uh, Christmas build for my club to, that I got to get on and I'm not going to stop on this Porsche but I don't think I'm going to make it to the deadline for the Porsche build because I'm really digging this Porsche a lot but I'm just haven't gotten as far as I want to but I actually as I'm sitting here talking to you and sanding away I'm kind of liking liking the effect that's happening a few places it went just too far we're down to the plastic down there but I can touch that up with some rusting and I'll do that it gives me a guideline but I think I don't know let's uh, dry this off and I think we got some faded looking paint there and I might even uh, go ahead and go down to some lighter grits and work it with lighter grits. 
I think we might have a really cool look here. This is kind of interesting. I'm just going to work on this fender before I get on the other stuff. And, and then let's go ahead and, you know, I've got my, uh, let's see, there's 3200 grit. I love my, uh, I've had these for years, 30 years probably from Micromesh, if any of you remember that company. I got these uh, sanding cloths or polishing cloths and I are just... They, they're so good. As long as you keep them clean and you keep dipping them in, you, you're gonna be you're gonna be fine. But I think we've got a pretty cool look going here. And this is you know an old old paint job, very distressed paint job. Uh, the car that I'm doing is basically gonna be this Porsche that was more function over form. And they didn't really worry about the looks. They wanted it to just really be performance and handling and stuff like that. Because I'm going to do, like I've got my, I haven't really done much with the chassis. But I've got the chassis right here. And I'm going to put all this, the, the suspension components on after I do a little weathering and gunking and schmutzing up with some oils and greases and yucks. I'm going to start putting the suspension on this. And the suspension is all going to be really like brand new. All brand new, all set up. I want to make the engine look pretty decent. You know, I got the engine I pulled out. You know, it's it was it's like that. We're only going to see the underside, so I'm going to doll up the underside of this engine. So that's all you're going to see. I'm not going to be taking the the lid off. So that is our direction on this baby, and uh, I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. Though weathering is so much fun and. And sometimes I think, ah, it just it wasn't how I went. It just went a little too far there. But you know what? I think we're going to be okay. I think I'm getting the look I want and the rest of it. And you just kind of get out and blend it, and you're going to be able to, um, I don't know. I, I, it's going to look cool when I get it all done. We'll make everything transition well. And I think we're going to have a good-looking weathered vehicle here. Get a little bit of actually let's knock this down a little bit with uh with the uh I don't know, I think it's fifteen hundred right here. And then come with thirty six hundred. And let's just see what it's looking like here. Yeah, I think I think that's gonna have a nice road rash effect. I'm sure I'm sure Tim's screaming at me. I've got to be doing something wrong here. I can't remember what he said to do. I, I should probably go watch his video. But yeah, there we go. Just get them. I think I buried them under too much too much paint because they're just taken doing too much damage when I'm trying to get them out but man it'll work out I think I'm gonna get a cool look with this the thing about you know weathering up something like that um, weathering up a, a paint job is you you can go too far but lots of times if things happen you can use a little serendipity there and go in a direction that you didn't think it was gonna go and it'll probably work out good because man yeah not too bad I think I get I'm gonna try to not go too far down on this if I get some of that get it just smoothed out I think we can have some pretty cool look I'm gonna, and see right there that's the the white undercoat and underneath that is some of the primer and the rust color so you kind of just do a little work in like that to where you can get down into all the layers. I think we might have a very cool wear look right here. See where it's going? I like that. I don't want to go too much farther. Move on to... Because I already broke through right there. You see that little spot? That's the, that's the plastic. The white plastic. Ooh, I like how smooth that feels. That's 
pretty cool. Yeah, see, yeah, I went through that. I didn't want to go that, that, I didn't want to go there. But I can touch that up with some weathering. With the weathering things that I have for doing uh, rusting, like what do we got? We got some, I got some cool stuff here. Yeah, like rust right there from Vallejo. There's some pigments. We got a bunch of stuff over here. Got a little bit of light rust wash. So I might be able to bring some of that back. Got that. Well, I can't say in the automotive paint world, when you're prepping a car, what we used to call something like that, uh, it was called an hole. That is the technical term. <laughs> so we got an hole right there. And let's let's try something here real quick and then we're gonna wrap this this video up I love this stuff so we're gonna use uh, ammo by MIG I'm just gonna which I'm really not ready for this part oh I must have never opened this it's stuck we were gonna use that let me see Ooh, I got an idea here's something cool let's get a little bottle cap here to do a mixing and we've got Let's see, red oxide rust, and we've got fresh red oxide. Okay, this is a little bit darker. I'm gonna take a little bit of this, tiny bit of that. Oops, wrong one. Do a little there. Don't really want that much. And we'll take this. So there. I did that, and then let's take a little bit of uh, streaking rust effect. Oh boy, and I don't have a tool to get these open here. Yeah, there we go. And let's go ahead and I think I'll just take a little bit. Actually needs a bit of a mixing up. And we'll just do a little mixing up in there. Usually when I do this, I don't use my better brushes. It's got kind of a good, good color there. Do a little of that. Let me just get some of the liquidy part of the. There we go. We can just let it run because you know, just naturally run and let it streak. I think we can do something really cool there. And what we might do is probably hit a few of these, and then I can kind of go over. Let's uh, do some touching over here. Have a little rag and kind of dab some things and kind of make it. And we can hit a few of the areas that we went to the plastic just to give it back some of that rust. And you know, sometimes you can just kind of take it, it's kind of bleh. You can speckle a few areas just to give a little chipping look. That you don't like, eh. You can wipe it away. Let's just do a couple of little dabs here and then. It streaked down the, the rain gutter there. Have a little bit of rusting going on. You can flick around and from the speed of the car, right in a rainstorm. If it's a little too much, we can just kind of calm it down. Oh, look what I did! Isn't that silly? I didn't let that dry enough. Bring it back.
take a little more a little more wash I tell you uh, uh, go to a lot of these armor youtubers like Andy's Hobby Headquarters go check out his weathering that's who I learn a lot of stuff from and this is the kind of stuff he does on the tanks and stuff and it works metals metal man it works on model cars and it works on tanks on airplanes or whatever I think we're gonna let that alone just a little bit more of a and there's probably other layers that we'll put on there with other types of, of weathering deals so I think uh, this is all for now a little update on this thing I'm gonna throw a little bit more of a wash on this to kind of blend not make it so clunky and what you gotta do with these washes it's kinda like you gotta step back and let them dry naturally and see how things go that kinda looks pretty cool over there I'm just gonna throw some washing wash over here rust wash there a little rust wash there we'll come probably come back and do a little bit more chipping effects and streaking and all that and I think I think we're coming up with a pretty cool look but there you go that's it that's where we roll and uh, yeah, done with that so I want to thank you all for watching we're having fun with model cars because that's what we do right we screw up our model cars why because it's fun, right? Here's the producers.